So yeah, finally uh, we are at the end of piston engines and today we are going to discuss carburetor. Okay, so carburetor. So the purpose of the carburetor is to simply just maintain the required fuel is to air is to fuel ratio. Alright, so purpose maintain air is to fuel ratio. Alright, so now it works on two principles the carburetor. So the first uh, principle is the YouTube principle. Yes, apparently we are on YouTube as well. So anyway, YouTube principle. And the second one is the Venturi principle. Okay, so before we uh, continue, I will just like to show you a diagram so that uh, you can understand. So this is the general uh, carburetor that uh, is a float type here and uh, here is a throttle valve that is controlled by the throttle in the cockpit there is a vent or the breather for the float case fuel is supplied to this float chamber here and there is a discharge tube which is connected to the venturi and the main jet now the youtube principle is used here this is the youtube principle if you can see the level is maintained same so it is this is the youtube principle if you have a, a connecting uh, rod like this in between where there are two uh, outlets or uh, two chambers the if you f flood in with the any any sort of liquid fluid anything it will maintain same level on the both sides if you fill it up, fill it up all right so hence this is the youtube principle and the venturi principle is apparently a, co a convergent duct principle that we had discussed in the bernoulli's theorem what happens there is your pressure drops and your velocity increases which causes the main jet and causes the flow of fuel into the Throat, uh, into the induction valve and further on all right so the float is the one that maintains the fuel supply it just gives indication if the fuel is uh, dropping or increasing in the float chamber and there's the airflow here uh, which is uh, you know the one that keeps the keeps your air as to fuel ratio through and throttle is the one that uh, pulls in more air all right so now let us uh, that that was the uh, you know the diagram that is uh, enough for you guys to uh, uh, get hold of what I'm going to um, mention in the further video now so let's start off with operation of carburetor okay so now the first step as I mentioned the fuel enters float chamber where the level is maintained maintained by the float through the YouTube principle alright now this float controls the fuel level and the other side of the tube that is the nozzle is placed nozzle is placed in the venturi so other side of the tube you have the nozzle all right so now air intakes air enters the carburetor carburetor through the air intake filter and when it enters the venturi there is a pressure drop due to the convergent duct pressure drop and this helps in drawing fuel now what happens to the fuel in the venturi it uh, basically gets vaporized all right it gets vaporized in the venturi that's the importance of venturi the throttle controls the throttle valve as i had told you in the during the diagram and hence the you know the 
air is to fuel uh, mixture that is required is supplied to the induction intake manifold or induction manifold now there's something called as a diffuser diffuser now what happens is uh, it is inside the carburetor and it maintains the uh, you know air is to fuel ratio as per the mixture setting because I'll just show you a diagram again I have here so uh, we have a diagram here and this if you can see the diffuser well plays inside the float chamber itself alright so now what what this diffuser does is it maintains there will be a mixture setting right so the diffuser what it does is it maintains the air is to fuel ratio according to the required mixture setting set by the pilot alright so that's what's the diffuser the, the, the different types of diffuser but I don't think we will be going in uh, depth to discuss the types of diffusers here so I'll just mention what uh, the functions of diffuser are the so fitted inside the carburetor to maintain air is to fuel ratio as set in the mixture mixture setting now what happens is the most important thing it does is prevents oversupply of fuel at increased throttle setting okay so what it does is, is avoids you know sudden bump of fuel that is uh, if you have a throttle setting increase suddenly you just push the throttle the diffuser will compensate for that and not allow an oversupply of fuel because oversupply of fuel will again cause a lot of cooling and in the engine might actually just shut down all right so and then uh, the also the diffuser vaporizes the fuel uh, it helps in vaporization of the fuel okay so now next uh, there's some small thing uh, called as an acceleration pump acceleration pump uh, is in general terms is opposite to what a diffuser does but uh, what happens is uh, sometimes when you uh, open the throttle more rapidly air is drawn in and the fuel supply may not match up so then accelerator pump actually supplies more fuel sudden to prevent a leaner mixture all right so if suddenly uh, sudden opening of throttle will intake or draw in you know air but fuel supply may not match up so what acceleration pump is does is acceleration pump pump accelerates fuel supply and prevents leaner mixture this uh, if you can uh, maybe uh, example could be go around if you just suddenly open throttle there will be a lot of intake of fuel, uh, air but the fuel might not just come so to avoid that you have an acceleration pump now what happens if your float float is punctured all right if your float is punctured the floating chamber won't function and hence you'll have flooding of the uh, floating chamber of the uh, uh, float chamber and flooding of the ho whole carburetor itself so these are extra points that i'm writing here punctured float causes flooding of carburetor and it's obviously not desirable now uh, the important point of uh, float uh, floating chamber is uh, the float type float type is that uh, your uh, you cannot uh, really do a maneuver you cannot do inverted flight because it's all you know uh, based on a youtube principle so you the, the more the maneuvers you increase the maneuvers the more the chances that your air is to fuel uh, ratio wouldn't be as required now there's something also uh, manual mixture control uh, if you're flying regularly or if you 
are flying right now right away you know that at a higher altitude the density of the air goes down and hence your air quantity of air is less and uh, th therefore we need to lean the mixture so that uh, you know you maintain the performance of the engine all right and uh, now i'll discuss uh, carburetor heat carburetor heat okay now a drop how how do we know that we carburetor heat is there so drop in rpm in a fixed pitch indicates carburetor heat basically the performance of the engine is going down whereas a drop in map manifold pressure in a constant speed prop indicates carburetor heat okay now another point uh, another extra points here i would like to mention here is carburetor icing carburetor icing may take place anywhere between minus 5 degree centigrade to 30 degree centigrade very important question is generally asked most of the time and most favorable condition for this is minus 15 degree oat plus if you have 50% of relative humidity rh okay so that is uh, there now the recommended temperature to prevent carburetor icing is that uh, you maintain the intake at, of the carburetor at around about 32 degrees to prevent icing maintain carburetor intake at 32 degrees it's it's a recommend recommended one and uh, now if the temperature gauges are not fitted there there might not be temperature gauges so how how would you detect carburetor icing practically so now uh, if you apply carburetor heat that is cht knob on your uh, panel if there is ice present inside if the, if it is icing taking place so the ice will melt and enter the cylinder and your rpm will drop all right and if there is no icing the rpm will drop due to decrease of density of the air so there will be a different slight difference if your ice is melts and enters into the cylinder there will be an rpm drop most important point here i would like to mention is do not use carburetor heat on ground take off and initial climb okay because the, what happens is uh, carburetor heat uses unfiltered air this is because because carburetor heat uses unfiltered air and this results in you know loss of power and which which is what you do not want absolutely at uh, these critical stages of flight that is take off initial climb and of course on ground while taxiing around so you do not want that to happen what the, i told you the disadvantages uh, of a float type uh, you know float type carburetor i'll just write it down so that it just stays there disadvantages number 1 there's no way you can cannot fly inverted due to gravity of course then ice accretion may occur third uniform fuel distribution won't happen basically it doesn't occur uniform fuel distribution So now, what happens? Uh, what are the modern modern type of carburetors? Uh, they are generally fuel injectors, the fuel injection systems. So modern carburetors. Have fuel injectors. 
So fuel injectors are basically uh, engine driven pumps. Uh, they supply uh, fuel in the gas turbine engines in the gas turbine engines EDPs do that. So what happens in a fuel injection system? I'll give a short brief on that. Fuel injection system. Now there's a regulator inside the fuel injection system and it supplies the fuel in correct ratio in atomized state. That is the most important thing. So it meters fuel and air by via a regulator that is fit and supplies correct ratio supplies correct ratio by weight in atomized state okay so the concept of vaporizing in the um, venturi and all is not required it's al already in the atomized state so the mixture control may or may not be required it depends on the type of engine type of uh, aircraft as well now since since the since fuel is already atomized atomized icing problem is reduced rather nil in fact but at the intake air intake but at air intake icing may occur okay now fuel uh, the, there's no vapor locks because fuel is supplied under pressure no vapor locks fuel is supplied under pressure okay and uh, of course uh, the disadvantages are removed you can fly inverted you have a uniform distribution to all the cylinders and uh, problems of detonation backfiring are reduced i'll just write it down can fly inverted and uh, uniform distribution form distribution takes place and lesser problems of detonation and backfiring that's all so we are done with carburetors as well finally and uh, that's the end of piston engines for us and uh, next we're gonna start up with jet engines and uh, yeah I'll have a quiz link for this up and running in some time so just uh, go for the description it will be there in the description the quiz link and um, if you like the video please do like it share it with everybody and um, I welcome all your suggestions comments and reviews about the video I'm trying to improve my content yes uh, I hope to do better and I'll see you soon in jet engines on Thursday alright actually you know what if uh, possible I'll try to give a summary for the piston engines but I guess uh, piston engines is a long uh, thing I'll just look out look about that alright guys uh, see you then uh, subscribe to the channel like the Facebook page it's up in the description and uh, that's all see you guys take care bye bye have a great day